Hello everyone, my name's John, I drink things on the internet, and today we're going to be looking at this. This is a bottle of Ockentoshan whiskey, but it's not a normal bottle of Ockentoshan whiskey, as you can probably tell from the tin. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that. And you're probably also wondering, um, there's already whiskey in my glass. I get to live my 90s art attack dream today and say that here's one that I prepared earlier. There's a reason for this. This has been the glass now for about... Bearing in mind technical difficulties with the last video, about 30 minutes now. And that's because this isn't my first foray with this whiskey. So what I'll do is I'll get it out of the tin quickly. And you can kind of see... There we are. So you can sort of see from the pour level already. Uh, this is a 50 centilitre bottle, not a normal 70. So it's a bit smaller than normal. There was a sale on Master of Malt. Love Master of Malt. Master of Malt's great. Master of Malt. And this was going for dirt cheap. I mean, like, I couldn't believe the price that they were um, selling this for. It's a smaller format bottle, which I'm absolutely okay with. I don't mind um, 50 centilitre bottles. Um, I think they've got a place on the market. And I kind of wish that more distributors would make smaller formats because it gives you an opportunity to try more whiskies at home. So I've been getting to know this bottle for about a week now. And it's unusual for me not to dive in blind on one of these, but I thought with a 21-year-old whiskey, I should take a bit more time with it and kind of get to know it better. So with this one, what I found is it needs a bit of time. As with a lot of whiskies, you should give them a bit of time to get to know their environment, essentially. Pour it in a glass, leave it for about 10 minutes, let it do its thing. With this one, I found the sweet spot was around about the 30 minute mark. And once that happens, it really opens up. This started its life last century. So there's no harm in giving it a little more time. Now, this is not a standard bottling of Ockentoshan, uh, and there's a very good reason for that. Ockentoshan is one of those distilleries that fuck about with their whiskies. I'm just going to call it as it is. They are well known for heavy chill filtration, they cut most of their whiskies down to 40%. I think they're 21, they cut to 43, so it's a bit better, um, and they use colouring in all of them. Um, in fact, I had a look online and even the 21, they colour it. I'm a little bit sniffy about this sometimes. Don't get me wrong, like, I, I will drink a whiskey if it's chill filtered and coloured if I like the whiskey. But, with a 21 year old, if I'm putting down the money that a 21 year old is asking for, I want to taste the whiskey, not all the processes that have been done to it. But this is where independent bottlings come in, because you get access to distilleries that normally bugger around with uh, whiskies. Oh, I've got another example down here, actually, which I'll show you. Uh, this is a bottle of Jura from Douglas Lang, same independent bottlings. Some people have a bit of an issue with Douglas Lang bottlings, and I get it. They can be a little bit inconsistent. I've been lucky. I've always had good uh, whiskies from them. I don't buy them very often, and uh, I am kind of choosy. The reason why I bought these two in particular is I want to know what the liquid is like before the distillery get their hands on it. I would like to know what Dalmore is like as well before all the buggering about they do with that. Because um, I'm curious to know what the distillery itself can produce. Ockertoshan is a lowland distillery um, and they've got a bit of an unusual process in they use triple distillation, more commonly associated with Irish whiskies. There are a few Scottish distilleries that do it. Caninvy is the only other one that I can think of off the top of my head. There are other ones as well, I just can't think of them for the time being. With all that in mind, I paid about 70 quid for this for a 21 year old, that's good. That is good. 21 year olds do demand higher prices. One of the good things about, again, this being an independent bottling is that there's less of the showmanship with it. You know, it's not in a fancy box. There's no like clips and sliders and all that. Like things like Glenlivet and Glenmorangie, they really up the bling as the age statements go up. Um, and it's less about the whiskey at that point and more about showing off to your mates. It's, it's golf club whiskey, you know. Uh, Dalmore are quite famous for that as well. All of their whiskies are, you know, they're for they're for guys smoking cigars and showing off to their mates, you know, it's, it, the whiskey's kind of beside the point. One of the wonderful things about this being an independent bottling as well is that there's a lot of detail on it. It gives me an actual reference for the cask that it's been pulled from. Uh, it's a refill hogshead, no colouring, and not chill filtered either. And it's bottled at cast strength. This is 51.5% ABV. With that in mind, I'm going to add some water to this as well to help it along its way. Um, if you think of it as well, when you're getting a cast strength bottle, you're not actually getting a 500 mil. You're getting more whiskey for your money anyway, because what they would normally do with a 70 CL bottle is they would add water anyway. So it's almost like buying 
pre-diluted Ribena, if you think of it that way. I also love the colour scheme for the Ockentosh and Bottling. I just love that shade of sort of aquamarine sky blue hybrid. It's I love it. And I love the design of the all particular range as well. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna move the tin. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna pop the whiskey over here so you can actually see me. Because I've noticed I'm a bit of a bugger for this. The camera I'm using, I've had this for eight years now. And it, you can tell, it looks like it's had the shit kicked out of it, but it still works. And until it dies, which I suspect is coming, I'm going to carry on using it because this thing has seen me through thick and thin. It's not the best camera in the world. Uh, it doesn't do 120 frames a minute. A minute? Fuck it, oh, that'd be shit. Uh, it doesn't do 120 frames a second, I apologise. Um, and it doesn't do 4K, but do you know what? It's, it's not about what you've got, it's about how you use it. Some water in here. I'm going to give that a moment to get to know itself, and then we're going to dive in with the nose. There are nosing and tasting notes on this already. I'm going to broadly ignore them and just go off of... Whew. It's like um, Manuka honey and a freshly mowed lawn. There's something a little bit bitter orange about that as well. Not marmalade -y exactly, but more kind of sort of like candied orange peels. All right, I'm going to dive in. Hmm, there's a lot going on. There's um, honey nut cornflakes buttered toast. It's kind of like a breakfast whiskey almost. Um, and then as it develops as well, you've got sort of like, almost like, sort of like French custard, like creme pat. It's a bit thicker. Um, that's mainly due to the viscosity of the mouthfeel. It's a, it's a thick whiskey, this one. Then you've got more kind of like light floral notes coming through as well. A bit of a, a bit of like a digestive biscuity kind of a finish. There's a bit of a paradox with this one in that it represents a lot of the flavours of quite sweet things without the sweetness, if that makes sense. So it's got like the flavour of custard, sort of like a, a vanilla-y component without sort of the sugariness of it. Similar thing with the honey nut cornflakes. It's got the flavour of nuts, it's got the flavour of honey, it's got sort of like a toasted corn thing going on, but it's not got that overwhelming sweetness to it again. Sort of like if you've ever come across a wheat field, they're not the kind of thing that, you know, you see every day, but, you know, if you have ever... Say you're out on a geography field trip and you're like, oh god, why, why am I here? And there's like, like slightly serially smell in the air. That. Not a strong whiskey, this one, so you do need to give it a bit to work with. Instantly it's transformed it. It's butterscotch now, and there is some of that sweetness coming through now. Now that the ABV has gone down a touch, there's a little bit of like barley sugar notes coming through as well, but it's sticking with that kind of caramel butterscotchy sweetness. It's kind of like almost like a you chewed a Weetabix. Like no milk or anything, just like took a Weetabix and just like ha! other wheat biscuit brands are available. <laughs> I'm not the BBC, I can say whatever the fuck I want. There's something kind of rye bready about it as well. That's what I've been trying to put my finger on because it was like, there's a flavour in there that I recognise but I'm not sure what it is and I don't want to sound like an idiot. It's rye bread. Rye bread and marmalade and Werther's Originals. Other butterscotch candies are available, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna... Was it worth £70? Absolutely. It's worth more than that, to be honest. Um, the fact that it was £70, I feel like I've stolen this off of them almost. Um, it's fantastic. I get, again, some people don't like Douglas Lang bottlings, but it's down to the, the casks they pick, um, as much as anything else. This is absolutely worth it. It's... what's the cask, is it? We've got uh, DL13130, not sure if I mentioned that earlier. And it's delightful. Do you think you can still get this for a hundred quid? Do you know what? When I'm finished with this, if it's still cooking around, I probably will buy a second bottle of it. I'm absolutely in love with this. Again, I've tried some official bottlings from Ockentosh and I've been underwhelmed. This, it's, it's both wonderful and disheartening to see what the distillery is capable of. They're not making the most of what they have to work with. Uh, right, well, I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy this for the afternoon now. Uh, comment down below, have you tried any independent bottlings? What did you think of them? Am I alone in thinking that 500ml bottles are a perfectly reasonable way to present their whiskey? Do you feel like you're being shortchanged? Let me know. Thumb the video, and if you're new here and you're enjoying my geeking out on whiskies, um, other content is available as well if you're a wine lover or a beer lover. I, I touch pretty much everything. Not a lot of rum, I need to work on that. Um, but if you are new here and you like what I have to say, then consider subscribing. Um, we've hit 600. That, that came out of nowhere. Um, we were on 500 like two weeks ago and I was like, oh, this is amazing. I can't believe we got here. And then we just kind of kept going, which is amazing. Thank you very much. And lastly, if you are in a position where you feel like you would like to support the channel financially, you can do that. Um, there's a Patreon link down below. It's not mandatory. I don't do like memberships or any of that nonsense. Um, but if you do feel like chucking me a quid, then I will. I'm very grateful for it. Thank you very much for watching. 
next time we will be drinking something else. <laughs>